So, once again, good evening, everybody. It is now four minutes past nine on the 9th of March, 2020. A brand new week, as always. Anything can happen this week. Shout out to those people who are listening on the audio experience on iTunes or on Stitcher or on Spotify or SoundCloud or anywhere else. Please come and join us on Monday night live, if you can, over on facebook.com forward slash act on this TV every Monday night, 9 p.m. till 10 p.m. Um, join us on uh, LinkedIn as well, on Twitter. Good evening to those people who are listening and watching live live on LinkedIn and Twitter and Periscope right now. Patrick McKenzie's just joined. Andrea was just saying just before we uh, we went live properly, she's got an agent meeting this week, so we will talk about agents meetings tonight. I've just had an email um, that's really like <laughs> come at a time where I went, ah, Here's a perfect example of something that I'm I'm not a fan of. You know I've I and I you know like I've been quite vocal over the last few months about acting workshops, right? And I'm not I'm not calling out loads of acting workshops. Andrea on here runs really good value acting workshops. Ollie, who joins here, you know, his company or he's part of something called Casting Workshops. They run really reasonable, like, you know, not overcrowded workshops, like really reasonably priced, anywhere between sort of 32 quid, 45 quid. Um, decent, you know, decent workshops that are valuable. They put 15 people in a group, right? I was sent an email. No, I'm not calling anybody out by name or anything like this. But here's what pisses me off a little bit. And this is what I was talking about in a podcast with Mickey Jones. He's a director of Coronation Street, Emmerdale, EastEnders, um, also Hollyoaks as well. And you're going to see a little bit of that tonight. But we were saying, like, how do actors not get ripped off when doing acting and, and casting workshops? Because I get it, right? As an actor myself, in the past... I used to go to all these workshops as well. And some of them I would come away going, yeah, you know what? That was really good. I learned something there. But then particularly after I've been to a few, lots of times I would walk away and let me know if you relate to this. And I'd go, fucking hell, that was just pointless. I've just thrown another 50 quid at something that in my head, really, I think I was looking at as just paying to meet a casting director. In the back of our heads, we think, oh, if I can impress them, maybe they'll bring me in for something. You know what? Maybe they will. But nine times out of 10, they never did. Um, because they were cramming 20, 25 actors into these workshops. Um, and we were getting like, God, I don't know, six minutes of time with this casting director over like a three hour period. And then we were paying 60 quid for it and stuff like that. Bullshit. So I just had this email through. I won't name who it's from or anything like that. But this, this, this is sold as a seven hour workshop. So you'd go, wow, seven hours. Okay. It's 100 quid for a start, and I'm like, 100 quid, instantly, alarm bells ringing. I'm like, right, that's a really expensive workshop, right? It's for 20 people, right? So 100 times 20, this is two grand they're making, 2,000 pounds the facilitator of this workshop's making. And I was like, right, let's dig into this and see what you get for your, you know, what they what are they doing for their two grand? Um, and some, it's laughable. It's, an, it's, it's a joke, right? So you get there at 10 o'clock, it says. You don't start till quarter past 10, because obviously you, have, you take your coat off and you're hi, 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 all that sort of stuff. Then for the first two hours, right? Two hours, quarter past 10 till quarter past 12, um, you do a warm-up. I mean, for fuck's sake, if you're working on the West End stage, you don't need a two-hour warm-up. So there's two of your hours that you're paying 100 quid for. That's gone to a warm-up. Um, I mean, I don't know what you do for two hours. You know, I went to drama school for three years. We never did a two-hour warm-up, you know. We were performing professional shows and never did a two-hour warm-up before a a show. But that's your first two hours. Then you have a 15-minute break. So there's two and a half hours gone, and you've done nothing, but you've warmed up. I mean, what are you doing? Walking around, going, ma, 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 all that bullshit, right? Which is useful if you're going to go and do something that requires the use of your voice, as in theatre. This is supposed to be a TV workshop, right? So after you've done your two hour, your two two and a half hours basically of your turning up and then walking around doing a warm up, you then apparently do an intensive workshop from twelve fifteen till one forty five. So ninety minutes intensive apparently. This is intensive, right? Ninety minutes for twenty people. That works out at what does that work out at? What is that? Six minutes? Wait a minute, not even that, is it? So. 90 minutes, let's divide that by 20, fucking hell, sorry for swearing, four and a half minutes, so your intensive 90 minute workshop in that section of the workshop, in in that section of the day, four and a half minutes you get with the casting director, brilliant right, then you have your dinner, now your dinner's half an hour, so there's another 30 minutes of the day that's taken up with nothing, and then you do from 14.45 till 16.15, so another hour and 30 minutes another 90 minutes 
you get to do your one-to-one session with the casting director. So guess what? Yeah, that's another four and a half minutes you get with that casting director. Four and a half minutes, right? That's it then. And then you have a little Q&A for 45 minutes and you go home. So for your £100, you've walked around for two hours, you've sat and ate for half an hour, you've had a quarter of an hour break, um, and then you've spent nine minutes for your £100 with this casting director. It's bullshit, right? I just hate it. Sorry if I'm getting on a, on, on a high horse, but oh my God. What a load of shit. And then you go, okay, right, I'm going to do my due diligence and I'm going to, I'm going to look up the casting director because I say this all the time, right? Just because you've got the word casting director after your name doesn't mean you're necessarily relevant in the industry. And I'm not being disrespectful or rude to anybody there, right? There's a lot of casting directors and we all are more relevant at certain times in our careers than others. This guy was a casting director for quite, meant quite a lot of years, but he's not actually worked in what he was doing since 2015 in terms of the main show he used to cast. That's five years ago. And the last thing he cast for TV was over two years ago. So to meet a casting director who hasn't cast TV for over two years and pay him £100 to spend nine minutes with him, I mean, I'm not going to put any like, of my opinion on you, but I'm sure you guess what it is. Um, it's bollocks. So please, you know, if you are going to go and do workshops, and there are so many brilliant ones around, just do your research on these people. Because, you know, on the face of it, they'll dress that up like it's, de- you know, it's dead valuable. Um, but like people who aren't, you know, it's sort of like they don't know the industry properly, who will be blinded by the fact that somebody worked as a casting director for many years on something many years ago, might be like, oh my God, it's really good value. Here's a hundred pounds. And they get nine minutes with them when they're not even able to bring them in for anything right now. If you're meeting, if you're going on these workshops, because in the back of your head as actors, we all do, because like, if I can impress the casting director, I can get brought in. He's not casting anything, or at least it doesn't say he is. And there's nothing on IMDb to suggest that. So do your research. Um, there are gr- other great workshops available, though. Um, Actors Guild, proper cheap. The ones Andrea runs, first take, very cheap. Uh, Ollie, who does casting workshops, they're like 32 quid. Um, there's lots of good ones out there, so I'm not shitting on all, all workshops, but I just got that email 10 minutes before this broadcast and was like, I've got to speak about it. Um, because, I j- you know, for 147 quid, I'll give you... 12 months access to ads on this i'll give you 70 hours of brand new content a year plus a library of 250 hours of stuff with the biggest casting directors in the industry who are casting the biggest shows on tv right now not people who cast something five years ago who's going to give you nine minutes with them and i'm not saying there's no value in that day because he will have a, a you know he's going to have experience you know from his his, his long career but how relevant is that in a 2020 world when the industry moves along so fast? I don't know. It's for you to decide. I'm not going to tell you, like, you know, I'm not going to force my opinion on you, but please just do your uh, your research before you give anyone particularly a hundred quid. Um, so that's a little rant to just start with. I'm sorry I missed all these comments, um, but how are we doing, everyone? Andrew, good evening. Gary, good evening. Mark, Claire, uh, Chris Braxton, uh, Cole is in the house. Um, what, what's, what's been going on while I've been having a little rant? All right, Matt, hope you are good. Um, what else is, uh, is going on? It's all crazy. I just don't know what workshops to go to anymore, says Leah. You've just got to choose them. Why? You've got to just go, right, who's it run by? How much am I paying? If they've got an itinerary, how many minutes am I going to get to perform and I'm going to get FaceTime with the person I want, I'm want? i paying to learn from? Because I don't get a lot of... I don't personally get a lot out of watching other people do stuff anymore. What normally happens at workshops is you get up, you do your four, four and a half minutes, as we've seen in that breakdown, and then you watch everyone, you watch the other 19 people in the room do their stuff, and everyone's of such different levels. Some people you can learn from, some people, some people you'll be ahead of, some people you'll be behind, um, but like, I don't find it that useful anymore to watch other people. You know, you get to a point where you're like, I need to be doing in order to learn. So if I'm only, if I'm going to pay £100, I'm going to get two four and a half minute sessions that are apparently, it's a joke, isn't it? Apparently that's intensive. Fucking better, I'd be tense, intensive. You've got to fit a lot into four and a half minutes. Um, it's a joke. There's nothing intensive about it. There's nothing intensive about it. Neil Barnes, good evening. Um, but but there are, like I say, there are, there are decent ones, but just in terms of 100 quid. Um, that's just a, that's a rip off in my opinion um, Alex uh, is saying cough CDG website yeah Casting Access Guild website has a lot of uh, a lot of like strict rules about what work you know workshops have to be reasonably priced um, in order for uh, you know casting directors who are part of the casting directors guild to you know to be on them and it says they cannot be looked at as casting opportunities they have to be looked at as an educational only opportunity um, it's just mental definitely 
Dan said, Dan Sh- Sh- uh, Shida says he's going to be holding a workshop on why workshops are a load of bollocks. <laughs> DM me, it's 35 quid. <laughs> nice, excellent. I'll be, uh, I'll be coming on that. Nicolette, a good evening. Um, I want to play you. So um, so for those who uh, haven't noticed, right, let me just go over to the website, atsonthis.tv, a website that I run that I don't think is a rip-off at all. Like I say, 147 quid, I'll give you access to it for an entire year and you're going to get access over a year. You would get roughly 300 and... You get over 320 hours worth of coaching from the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, and producers in the uh, in the industry. But I put a brand new podcast up today that I know a few of you on here have heard. Have, you've either heard it or you've watched it with this legend here, Mr. Mickey Jones. Such an incredible guy. He's a director. He used to be an actor. He was uh, on Brookside many, many years ago. Um, but then he went into directing. He's been directing for about 16 years now. He directs Coronation Street. He directs Emmerdale. Um, he directs uh, Hollyoaks as well, Andy Stenders. He's basically the serial drama director guy. Um, and I didn't round at my apartment last week for a 75 minute chat on casting day player roles, you know, and basically, you know, these uh, roles that so many people in this community are after, you know, the sort of two, three, four episode roles um, within Coronation Street and all the, you know, all the other soaps. And ultimately, if you are looking for one of those roles and you think it would help you to have one of those on your CV, how you get one. Um, I'm going to play you a 15-minute preview of that tonight. If you want to get access to the full chat, you've got to get a membership to Acts on This TV. But like I say, it's um, it's super cheap. It's four pound twenty-five a week if you pay monthly, um, or you can pay one hundred and forty-seven pound for the entire year, which works out at what twelve pound twenty-five a month, which is like three quid, three quid a week. Something like that. Not a hundred pounds for nine minutes. God, you know what? You get more freaking value out of watching this preview tonight on here. That's fifteen minutes. Then you would for free. Then you would do go to that workshop because you get nine minutes, and then you're going to walk around for two and a half hours warming up. Who warms up for two hours? I don't even think like you know opera singers warm up for two hours. It's just padding out a day to make it look like you're getting value. What a load of bullshit. Um. So uh, yeah, I'm going to play you this tonight. But before I play you that, I actually have a clip that I'm just going to find on my hard drive now of Mickey talking about his workshops, because he does do workshops. And like I said, I'm not shitting on workshops. Workshops are good. Um, you can learn a lot of workshops if they're ran well and they don't cost a fortune. Um, but I'm going to play you a little clip of what Mickey says about his workshops and how he runs actual real workshops, where like you know people get up on their feet and do stuff, and he actually teaches you about working on TV and what it would be like working on set. So um, here's a little bit of Mickey talking about workshops. I'll be back in about two minutes and 20 seconds. How do you run your workshops when you get involved with them, and what do you do to, to kind of give value? What do you think makes a decent workshop? Well, for, for me, I, I'd say um, I, I haven't been an actor and, and you know, I've been on set and when you first get on set, no one explains anything. People are talking about wild tracks and hitting your mark and yeah. do you know what I mean? And eye lines and stuff. And when you've never done it before, you're a bit like, oh my God, what are they talking about? Yeah. So I try to like, like sort of teach people or, or let people know the pitfalls I fell into when I was acting. So, so I sort of aim it for that. So I give them little tips, little screen acting tips, little yeah. continuity tips. Um, and then I give them some scenes to work on. They go away, they work with the partner. Then I'll go around, have a little fiddle with them. <laughs> yeah. um, give them a little bit of direction, as we say. And then they show back sort of thing. And then we talk about it. So yeah. I, I like to hope that, as I say, I don't know how much people charge. I just get I just get booked and go. Um, but I hope to think they're getting the money's worth. I do try to, you know, give as much as I can to them. The one thing that I have against, and it's not against all workshops at all. I think some have ran incredibly well. Um, but I've seen like loads and loads of workshops pop up over the last couple of years. And generally they cram like 25 actors in. You know, they charge, I've seen some mate that are like, I mean, most people are reasonable. I've seen some at 100 quid, 125 oh, quid. There's a lot of workshops and things out there, but you know. Just finding, find yeah, just finding a good one. Tw- yeah, just for me, it's just about actually like looking at the people who run them and then, you know, and I said this to everyone before they sign up to Acts on this, I'm like, IMDB me, look at what I'm doing. You know, and if, if I go through a point where I'm not working as an actor, this won't exist, mate. I'm not going to run a community based on, you know, helping people stay motivated and get information from people and network and, you know, end up ultimately working if I'm not working. Because mm. then I just go, I mean, what are people going to do? Go, well, why are you trying to get me in the community? It's clearly doing nothing for you, you dickhead. Yeah. And I see a lot of actors setting up workshops and I go and IMDB them. They've done two short films. They've never done a piece of TV and yet mm. they're running this TV workshop promising people success they've never had. So I'm like, as long as you do your due diligence 
then ultimately, like, if you get ripped off, it's, it's your own fault because yeah. you haven't done enough research. So, yeah, do your due diligence. I really mean that. The day I stop working as an actor and I stop getting credits and I am stop being in this industry, this isn't happening. Won't be doing this anymore because I feel like a fucking fraud. It's like you're going, oh, yeah, just get involved with this and it'll help you get work. And you'll be like, Ross, why aren't you working then, you knob? Um, so, uh, so, yeah. Um, this is only happening whilst I'm working, but do IMDB me. If people don't know me, Ross Grant, IMDB me. See what I've been working on recently before you join ActOnThis.tv. See if it's working. Look at testimonials of the people uh, are leaving. I just saw Ollie Hewitt um, leaving a message on here. Says that he heard me on Spotify today selling some financial products. It was for HMRC. It's not a rip-off financial product, uh, Ollie. It was a voiceover I did last week. But Ollie, congrats to you. He's a member of ActOnThis.tv. Got his first TV job that I think you're filming this Friday, aren't you? And you had another audition today you know, based off the back of acting on the information on act on this. And, you know, all of you were kind enough to post in the Facebook group yesterday saying that, you know, this shit works. It does work. You know, I booked 25 jobs over the last few years on TV and massive shows based on what I'm learning through interviewing these casting directors, agents, actors, writers, producers, and execs on actonlist.tv. It does work. And I'm not charging people a hundred quid for nine minutes. Um, so, uh, so yeah, in terms of your workshops, do your due diligence. That's all I'm saying, and I'll, I'll, I'll stop, I promise, banging on about it. But I just genuinely hate seeing people just exploiting actors' desperation, really, because I was there once. I was working for minimum wage in a toy shop for £5.75 an hour, hating my life, and I'd have thrown any amount of money at anyone who told me that they could you know, get me out of that situation. And I just think people are taking advantage. And that workshop I mentioned before, it's run by other actors, you know, I don't think it's ran. It's in cahoots with that casting director because this is about the fourth time I've seen it. But with the first time I got an email through for that workshop, the person who was running it, who I'm pretty sure is an actor, it was cheeky enough to attach a PDF invoice to the email. Don't know how they got my email address. I think they got it. They bought the list off a company like Surviving Actors or something. And um, and the guy's details, the bank details, was the guy's personal bank details in the top left hand corner of the invoice. I was like, what a knobhead. Like, you know, at least set it up under a company if you're going to look legit. So don't forget, that's £100 a person times 20. That's two grand they're getting for their nine minutes that they're paying, you know, you're paying for for that guy. Uh, all right, Patrick, how are you doing? Um, Ollie, Ollie's in the house. Ollie, what are you to do with with casting workshops? Casting workshops is, a, is another legit um, casting workshops. <laughs> it's called casting workshops, but it's legit, right? I might even bring... I've got, let me bring the website up in the browser here, right? Because, Ollie, you're something to do with this, right? And as I say, Andrea, I'm a big fan of Andrea's stuff on here as well. She does, like, acting workshops and comedy workshops and writing workshops, and they're all reasonably priced. Look at these, those guys, right? These are honest on here, and I'm not getting paid to promote Ollie or anything like that, um, but on here, here's a couple of workshops. 32 quid, right? No wonder they're sold out. 32 quid. And it looks like the brief here, Ollie, is actually, like, you know, truthful... So you've got someone here, Lucy uh, Amos, right? Currently working as an associate at Nina Gold Casting. Nina Gold's probably the biggest casting writer in, in well, one of, the, one of the biggest casting writers in the world. And you've not lied and said, oh, Lucy from Nina Gold's casting, you know, casting department and made it out like she's the casting director. You know, you've put associate. Now, an associate is like, very senior within casting not an assistant and there's nothing wrong with assistants but i'm seeing a lot of people as well running workshops with assistants and associates and not saying they're assistants and associates they try to pull the wall over actors eyes by saying you know oh this person is from this big name you know department uh, this big casting director's department and they're not saying what they do in that department you know they could be putting out the bins for all you know and you're throwing 55 quid at them to go on a workshop um so yeah just again, just do your own work when you uh, when you go into these things. Um, definitely, right. I'm going to play you this 15 minute clip of Mickey Jones. So Mickey Jones, to recap for those people who might have only just jumped on, Mickey Jones is not only one of the nicest people in the acting industry. He's bloody talented, um, and he's the most one of the most giving directors I've ever met. If you are talented, you know what? If you are talented and you meet Mickey and you impress him, either with your showreel or, you know, if he sees you performing in a play or whatever, you will go on what I'm coining unofficially as Mickey's list. And Mickey will look out for a part for you when he is, you know, working on Coronation Street, Emmerdale, EastEnders, Hollyoaks. He loves giving actors their first break, ultimately. So if you are after your first TV credit this year, 
you need to watch this, I would encourage you to watch the full episode of this over on atsonthis.tv. Yes, you will need a membership to do that, but it's £4.25 a week. Um, it's a price of a coffee, basically, atsonthis.tv. Um, but you want to be following Mickey on Twitter as well. I'll give you all of his details after this. But this is 15 minutes of what was a 75-minute podcast. And it was also a phone-in podcast. I'm doing lots more phone-ins now so that members of AtsOnThis.tv, if you do have a membership, you get to submit a question before and with your mobile number. And I will phone four or five of you during a podcast. So, you know, we can't get everyone on each podcast, but I will get to you where you will get to speak to a top director, top casting director, and actually get personal one-to-one advice, top agent um, you know, for uh, to help you where you are at in your career. And lots of people, particularly those who spoke to Peter Hunt, the casting director for Hollyoaks, have now been in to see Peter for general auditions off the back of being part of that podcast. So again, as Ollie said, this shit works. So this is um, a 15-minute preview. Please keep leaving your comments. Um, I want to know what you think of it as we're going through. It will help me create content for you down the line. Um, I can still read all the, uh, all the comments. But you're going to love this because he's such a freaking legend. This is 15 minutes of the amazing, legendary Mr. Mickey Jones. I'll see you in a minute. Mickey Jones, welcome to Ormston. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome back to ActsOnThis.tv. How are you? Where the hell have you brought me to? Yeah, no. We brought, right, for transparency, we brought Mickey to Ormston. It's the first time he's been here in his beautiful mini that's an incredible colour scheme of red and black. Um, I won't give any more information away for people stalking him and actors. It's actually want... green. Is it green? Yeah, red and dark green. Oh, it looked like black. So I've got, I'm partly sighted, Mickey. Yeah, I'll just, okay, it it's red and dark green. Um, but on the way here, he's got a bloody puncture. So we now have to get that fixed. It's a very special tyre. You don't just get them from Quick Fit. No, no. So we are going to keep this to an hour. We're going to give 60 minutes of pure fire for the actors <laughs> absolute passion and fire of the acting industry and um, we're going to make a couple of phone calls to acts on this.tv members make their lives better um, and then we're going to get you off into the night to the aa or whoever you need to go to and we're going to fix your car i'll hold you to that ross i'll hold you to that honestly i will t- i will make i will make it a personal okay. mission of mine and petch's to get you sorted um because i appreciate you being here um so thanks for being here you've not been on acts on this for about two years i think we did a live broadcast last time um, where you were at home. It was a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? yeah. I didn't think it was that long, but time just goes, doesn't it? Yeah, it probably was. Yeah. Um, and we did, yeah, we did a live broadcast. Yeah. Um, that was kind of interactive. So we're going to have some interactive stuff going tonight. Um, but just for people who haven't, maybe they're new to the site, maybe they're new to the industry, they don't know of the famous Mickey Jones yet. The incredibly famous director, um, Mickey Mouse Jones on Twitter. If you oh, don't mind, double always, barreled, you know. <laughs> always, <laughs> double barreled. Always makes me laugh when I see that. Um, give us a little bit of background just on yourself. We've, you don't need to go into the whole story about how you got into this and that, but what's been happening over the last couple of years? What have you been up to? You're now working on Corey. We literally stole you away from the cobbles today. You're going on to do EastEnders soon. You've done all these, these serial dramas for a while, but just give people a bit of background on you and what you're all about. Well... Back in the year. No. Um, <laughs> well, I, I sort of like grew up loving telly. So I knew I always wanted to work in telly. And because the only thing you see when you're a kid, the only thing I thought was, oh, I've got to be an actor. So once I started actually acting, I thought, oh, I prefer the other side of the camera. So I sort of gravitated more towards like production, directing and stuff. So I have been an actor. And for the, about the last 15 years, it goes so quick, but I judge it by Bell Dingle. Because I know, because <laughs> I know when I first started on um, Emma Dale, she first started and she's like been in it for over 15 years now because yep. she was six. I think she might be, might be like 16 years. So I always like put my career on par with Bell Dingles. Yeah. So however long Eden has been in Emma Dale, that's how long I've been directing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah met Eden. Um, where did we meet at Petch? At the oh. Grand Ball for the Once Upon a Smile charity. You know, Danny Miller's charity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just been reading some stories to some children on behalf of Once Upon a Smile this morning at a soft oh, play right. centre in Stockport. Because it's have World a Beautiful Voice. It's World Book Day, Mickey. Oh, and what's of course your favourite book yeah. for World Book Day? Um, I think if it was World Book Day, I would dress up as one of the Valley of the Dolls. What, what even is that? They're like Hollywood. <laughs> That's like a 60s book, like Hollywood Starlets. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. Excellent. It was addicted to tablets, called, ah. which they call the dolls. So, yeah, that's what I dress up as. There you go. It's so, a thank God in- I didn't partake in, in World, book, world day. book Day. That was a little insight into Mickey's world. <laughs> um, so, what are you doing Corey at the moment then? You're doing, what, two blocks you're directing? Yeah, I've just finished one one block. I'm in my edit for that. And I start my new block, which I'm in my prep for because there's also crossover. 
Uh, about the 23rd of March, something like that. So. Right, okay. So, so how long's the block? Six weeks? Um, well, you've got your prep, your three weeks prep, and then you've got your two, three weeks shoots, depending on how much material you've got to get in. And, um, and then you've got a week's edit, so... I've lost count. What was About that? Six, six seven, seven weeks. Seven weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. So one thing, and I know when we ring people tonight, one thing that everyone's going to ask you, ultimately, you know what? Everyone in this community, they're all actors. They just want a job. Like this is one thing everybody wants. They all want a job. Um, you know, working on serial drama is sometimes the gateway to people's first TV jobs. We spoke about that a lot on the on the previous broadcast, you know, and ultimately getting through the door. For yeah. those of those day player roles, no doubt the people we're going to ring are going to talk about that. Um, but in this this these two blocks, have you done any, any casting for new people coming? in how's that all gone how's that work for people who are you know just finding out about this yeah and um, well to be honest i didn't have anything in my last block um but i've done two parts today oh old, right oh tell us about this without giving the story away well then. i've done an old woman which is really difficult because people don't really get old anymore yeah so when the writer writes old woman i think they they're thinking of like a 90 year old with a stick but that's not realistic for today well a 70 year old with a stick really 70 year old people are quite still quite like up for it and fun, aren't they? I've met yeah. some today and they're fabulous. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't believe they were 75, but they are. Definitely. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, there's a people I'm 72, I've... though, you know. Yeah, Mickey's getting knocking on 80 now. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so people I work out with in the morning, good old Bert, um, he's 84. And I've said this on like loads of times. People in the community will know this guy by, by his name, this guy Neil, who I work out with in the morning. He doesn't even know how old he is, Mickey. He's somewhere between 90 and 93, but he doesn't know. 90 and death. Yeah, he's just like <laughs> somewhere. Um, but yeah, he's lost track of how old he is because he's that old. But um, he's still knocking about so yeah i yeah. guess like old woman doesn't mean someone so, who's just not yeah. doing anything and then we had a prison guard so right, okay. i can't give you any more information on that that would be just too much yeah so right so talk us through the process then in terms of the people who are who are being seen for these these are just one ep roles are they yeah one ep role um the the older older woman um uh that's just a little someone passing in the street who's got a bit of a bitchy comment so it had to be like quite a good actress to do it yeah um because obviously it's someone who's going to be straight away dislikable, but you've still got to try and make them lovable and realistic. And then the prison guard, which has got, well, I always find those parts, which is usually people's in, into soaps like police, um, lawyers, um, nurses, doctors. Those parts are quite difficult to do because I always find them more about giving the information. Mm -hmm. So I look for someone who can bring a little bit of character to it, who I say, um, oh, just shove a love in there, or you know what I mean? Ah, just so it becomes right. less like... Um, I'm just here to deliver. Yeah, I, I'm just here. So, so the prison warden went, oh, come on, love, you'll be all right. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just to make it a little bit more like, like we are in real life. I was doing a short film not not so long ago, and the first script I got sent had a policeman in it. The policeman knocked on the door and he went to him, Oh, hello, madam. I heard there's been reports of disturbance in the area. And I went, Who in God's name yeah, speaks, speaks like, like that? that? You know, it's not 1950. Yeah. And I think policemen, police women, you've got to keep them human. So yeah, that's yeah. what I was aiming for with my prison guard today. So. Yeah. And, you, and do you get any safe stuff like, you know, Martin Sterling or the storyline is there and the writers and stuff? Like, you know, the dialogue comes through that is just quite expositional like that. Are you all right as a director to go, I just want you to change this up a little bit. They don't mind that. Um, I'd sort of maybe say in the meeting, you know, when you have the um, sort of director producer meeting, I might just mention, oh, I'll try and do this, you know, however I was going to do it. Like I've got some stuff in the block I've just shot, which was a lot of kids. Right. And um, so to try and make the sometimes if you if you're a bit older and you're trying to write kid speak, it's, it's not <laughs> anyway. Let's leave that there. Like, like. Um, <laughs> it's not quite kid speak. Um, I can't kid speak anymore myself, but I know when it's not kid speak. Yeah. And um, so so I sort of said to some of the kids, "Oh, would you say that really?" And they're like, "No." And they went, "No." So I went, oh, "Well, we'll change it." But I, I had agreed that with people. Yeah. And just gone, "Oh, let's change it," you know, because. Obviously, everyone's got to do the lines that are on the page, really. Yeah. You know, so. Nice. So for those people who you've seen today, you don't have to say you got it. I'm guessing you've 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 made a decision. How quick do you make a decision on those day player roles? Because for me, I've always found out the same day I've been for them. Um, to be honest, uh, we did make the decision there and then. So really. what was it? What was it for those people? The old woman, what was it that she gave you the others didn't? And what did the prison um, guard give you the others didn't? To be honest, this will sound ridiculous. When it's those little parts like police, doctors, whatever, I believe if you couldn't do it, you wouldn't be in the room. Right. So I believe that your agent's got faith in you and you should have faith in yourself and you come to the audition. So I'm not really bothered about the acting. <laughs> right. Okay, right. <laughs> no, I am, obviously. I know they're going to be good and uh, I I'm more interested in someone who I get on with. Right. So, uh, uh, oh, And someone who's going to hold the nerve in the scene. 
I don't want someone who's really nervous who, when it comes to being faced with Phil Mitchell, not that not that Phil Mitchell's involved in this, he's just popped into my head, then they're not going to lose the nerve sort of thing. Yeah. Have you, you know? see, have you seen that on set before? People are just, you know, he's, he's coming and going, all right, bruv. And they've gone, oh shit, it's Phil Mitchell. <laughs> oh God. Or it's um, Ken Barlow, you know. Um, yeah, I, well, there is a certain amount of, of it because they, they've been in our living rooms for so long. I think you sort of do, even yourself a little bit, you know. Like when I walked onto Albert Square for the first time, I was a bit like, oh, I bet, oh my yeah. God, it's oh, Albert first, Square. Well, the first time you walked down the cobbles. I mean, you know, just going back, yeah. I did my first bit of background work when I was 15. And this was when Julie Esmondal, she was Hayley and Roy, and they were... Alan Halsell, Tyrone, was living with him. I think it was his birthday. Oh, and right. we went to play his mates. Me and my, my mate at school, Claire, we just went to be extras. And there is something when you're sat in that green room mm. and it was at this iconic building when it was on Key Street uh, before it moved to Media City, you know, and then Ken Barlow walks in to the green room to say hello to the extras, which is a really nice thing to do. There is a party that goes, holy shit, like, it's Ken, you know. And then when you walk down the cobbles, you're like, I'm on Coronation Street. Yeah. It's like, it is, uh, you know, people look at soaps as like, I say, almost kind of like the entry stuff for people's careers or I'll work on a soap for a bit and then I'll go into top drama and stuff like that. The soaps probably get watched more than anything in the world. Mm. They're famous throughout the world. Corrie is so massive. When my mate Rob Collier was in it, just saw him today, he'd be getting letters and fan mail from Canada, America, all around the world, millions and millions and millions of people are watching these things. They're epic in terms of their scale. So it's pretty daunting, I guess, when you walk on there. I think what they do, the soaps now, I mean, in the old days when I was a kid, you used to have a much more varied television schedule sort of thing. You'd have your sitcom, your soap, Corrie obviously was uh, was there, um, and all sorts of other type of shows. Now, because there's not that much stuff made, yeah. I think Corrie, Emmerdale, you know, Hollyoaks, EastEnders, they have to fill so many stuff, so, so many sorts of slots. So I think sometimes they are a bit like a sitcom or they are high drama or they are day-to-day -day existence stuff. Bit so I think it's yeah. got to do a lot of a lot of work now to keep yeah. the audience satisfied. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they've got a, a major role, I think, you know, to, a major task rather than a role, sorry, to tick a lot of boxes, you know, yeah. entertainment-wise. So. so the people who you gave the role to today, you're like, right, you can hold your own, film it, well, not Phil Mitchell in this case, but someone walks on, you play, ooh, oh, you can't give any storylines away, but are they, were they in scenes with big um, characters? Yeah, they're in scenes with, 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 with big hisses, really, yeah. Um, so so the older woman pass, I, I'd mess it here a few times, who got the pass, and, um, and, I knew she'd be able to do a good job, and also I, I'm really fond of her. She tickles me funny bone. Right. Okay. Um, but the girl, the girl in the prison, she's um, she's new. She's never she hasn't had a telly job before. Oh, amazing. So so I, I just like she brought something, and it, it's not a massive scene. Um, it's a small scene, but she just brought a bit of a bit of humour yeah. and to, to the conversation I was having with her, and and she made the character human. Right. So, so that was a, a big plus for me. Yeah. And if, so, if, if they, uh, as casting, made the call to their agents to go, can we have them? I don't know whether they have or not yet. That's, so, you know, it's a lovely so, call when you get um, that. But probably tomorrow morning because it was quite late when we were doing them. So yeah. it'll probably so, be in the morning. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Right, I'm going to make it. While we're on the talk of day players, you know, let's get let's get some, some calls in. We're going to call Jimbo, I think, because he actually had a question that I can't remember what it was, but I know it was about day player roles. Um how, how often do you, uh, who was it who chose actually the people who came in for those parts? Was that casting or was that some of the, the decisions you? Um, it, it'll be casting. We'll have, we'll have got the list together sort of um, the, on the breakdown, the script breakdown. They'll have got the people in and so it's all down to them really. Yeah. Do you ever get a, get a chance where you're like, actually, you know what? I've seen this person twice. I'm going to remember. Well, one of them I did say. Yeah. You know, can we get, can we get her in? Who, who I'd mess a few times as well. So um, Nice, you see. Make yeah. friends with Mickey, he'll get you apart. That's how, that's how, that's how it works. Tweet him, he'll get, he'll get, get him involved, he'll do anything. Yeah, get him involved tweet. with anything. If you want him to direct something for you, he'll just do that, honestly. He's the most giving guy Not in the anymore, world. Not, not after anymore. me, punch ya. Yeah, this is, he did a good task coming here to do this and uh, a goodwill gesture and he's got a bloody puncher. Uh, right, we're ringing Jimbo. Mm. Oh, it's a bit loud, that, isn't it? Turn that down a little bit. Jim's obviously not waiting by the phone to answer it. I know, it's like, honestly, he's, he's locked in a hotel room. He wants to be a millionaire speaking. style. Jimbo, it's Ross. How are you, mate? Hello, buddy. I'm very well. How are you? I'm all right. Guess who I've got on the phone here? 
Let me guess, Mickey. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. We almost didn't have him because he's got a punctured tyre. We won't dwell on that, though. I feel we're dwelling on it, Mickey. We're going to get Ross, that. every time I get it on my head, you mention it again. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to fix his tyre for him. Um, James, Jims, uh-huh. James, um, we were just talking, mate, about... Um, Mickey's been casting today um, for a couple of parts, um, some day player roles. And I can't remember your question exactly because it's been a bit of a rush today, but it was about day players, wasn't it? What do you want to ask? Yeah. Hi, Mickey, by the way. Hi, Jim. Um, you're right. Yeah, I'm good, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Jimbo, James, whatever Ross decides to call me as long as it's not rude. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just had a general question, really, uh, about day players. Obviously, um, when, you, when you go to cast for, for day players... Oh, and you will if you want to watch the rest of that another 60 minutes of Mickey Jones he's just bloody hilarious um, and also gives out some incredible advice to three or four uh, actors who call up well we call them um, in the community get over to actonthis.tv um, and uh, and get yourself a membership if you've already got a membership it is already on the site in your members area if you go to the top of the page if you logged in click on members area just here Click into your premium membership, and in your premium membership, you will see it there. Our top, uh, our latest five features, you'll see it there, and you'll also see it way down in features with uh, directors there. And there's loads of other features with directors, other soap directors, other top drama directors. Everyone from Lewis Arnold, who directs the biggest like you know shows in TV, um, to other serial drama. Um, directors, independent film directors, people like Phil Barancini, who's directing Stephen Graham right now in the first feature film. Phil is making, I mean, there's just hundreds and hundreds um, of uh, hours worth of uh, incredible podcasts there. So if you've stumbled across this for the first time, actsonlist.tv, get your bloody membership. Um, best thing you could do for your acting career. And it's not £100 for nine minutes like that workshop we looked at before. Um, so what do you think? Who just thinks Mickey Jones is just the best? Um, he's such a good guy. Um, really, really cool. And like I say, he's just very uh, open to meeting new people as well. Um, Andrew Connor says Mickey's got a cool accent because it's very similar to Andrew Connors. <laughs> um, he definitely has. Do you know what's hilarious? When I create the little pieces of micro content that promote the full podcast, so like the little two-minute clips you'll see on Twitter and LinkedIn and all that sort of stuff, um, I send them off to get captioned, so ultimately get subtitled. Um, and the company who subtitles them in America, some of the translations I had back today... <laughs> <laughs> from stuff they honestly right at one point i think they just they didn't know what it was they just wrote on it and one on one of the captions i had to go and edit it it just says flobby dobby it literally i'm not even joking it actually said flobby dobby i went he definitely didn't say that <laughs> he's not he's not mr blobby but honestly that's genuinely i called petchin to show him it's genuinely what it said i think they were taking the mick but uh but yeah americans probably can't sort of uh decipher the Liverpoolian tones all that well uh, Brendan said he's going to be tuning in right after this nice one Brendan you'll love it mate honestly really really good Andrea says top scouser he really is honestly such a good guy um, his handle on Twitter if you are listening to that and you want to go and listen to the full thing and then let him know you listen to it it's obviously a great reason to tweet him um, is uh, M1 so Mickey basically with a 1 so M1CKEY J-O-E so Mickey Joe but instead of an I it's the number 1 um, so you can let him know that you've uh, you've seen a bit of this tonight and obviously let him know your favourite takeaway if you go and listen to the full 75-minute podcast. Um, he's awesome. And Andrea said he's a, he's a great stand-up too. We talk about his stand-up career and his alter ego, Mini Scouse, his drag drag artist act, um, which sounds absolutely phenomenal. We'll definitely have to uh, catch him doing that at some point. Um, Dwayne said he did a workshop. Uh, won a free giveaway and it was amazing made me realise I was born to be an actor nice one Dwayne yeah no honestly mate like I say workshops are, are, are powerful when they're done properly there's just a few in the industry I feel like I need to call bullshit on because I just think they're an absolute cash cow for unsuccessful actors who just you know want to make money out of other actors it's out of order really Mickey's a brill human being says Dougal very honest and very helpful Dawn says Mickey's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet Elizabeth says as a Scots woman even Alexa doesn't understand me <laughs> yeah Alexa doesn't even understand me though half the time honestly there's a bit of a northern mank um alexa struggles definitely struggles with me sometimes she's disobedient i'm like alexa come on 
play the game. Uh, Mickey's lovely bloke, genuine guy, says, Andrew, listen to this this afternoon. He was great as usual. Uh, and I'll let him know on Twitter. I saw your tweet, Mark. Thanks for uh, thanks for that, mate. Um, so we've got a few minutes left. Um, anyone, do you want to do a bit of Q&A? Um, I've got loads of good stuff coming up for premium members of ActsOnThis.tv this month. Um, I wasn't here last Monday, actually. Let me tell you a little bit last Monday. Um, so the new season of The A Word, um, a brand new BBC, well, it's not brand new, is it? But a brand new season of The A Word, a BBC drama that you'll probably, uh, you'll probably have seen the first two seasons of. I think starts, is it this week? It might start, um, but they were doing episode one, like preview screening with the Royal Television, Royal Television Society um, at the Lowry Theatre last week. So I went to that because Chris Eccleston and the writer of that show, BAFTA winning writer Peter Bowker, were there. And I thought, I've wanted to get Chris and Peter on for a podcast for such a long time, so I couldn't pass that opportunity up. That's why I wasn't live last Monday. I sent you all an email. Hopefully you got that. Um, but I managed to get email addresses for everybody. And fingers crossed, um, we're going to have them on for a podcast for actsonlist.tv I've also got coming up at the end of this month Sophie Holland who is the casting director for some massive stuff including The Witcher on Netflix I'm going to be bringing her up from London having a coffee and talking all about her sort of system for casting you know ultimately how you guys as actors can get in the room with her for you know stuff like The Witcher she's just cast a second season of The Witcher and The Witcher you know for a long time when it came out on Netflix was the biggest show in the world um, so it's not a uh, I mean literally the biggest show in the world it was number one on Netflix for a long time um, not just in the UK but throughout the globe so you know you can't really get bigger than that. So Sophie's going to come on. Uh, I've also got Chris Lunt, the writer, coming on. Um, he's wrote £100 million worth of drama over the last year. Um, he's going to be talking about you know casting from a writer's perspective. Writers have a big say, in particularly in, in you know high-end drama, for who gets brought into the room. Um, I know actors who Chris personally has given roles to because he's written them for them. And these aren't big actors, by the way. You don't have to be a big actor to have a role written for you if you are... a, a just a decent person and you network and you add value to people's lives. Um, I've got exec producers coming on. Um, I just got in touch with the production coordinator from Red Production Company today because I want to try and do a red t- uh, a round table. A red table? Red Production Company. It would be a red table. A round table interview with... Um, there's a new series Russell T. Davis has written coming out soon called Boys. It's incredible drama. I went to the read-through. It's probably the most powerful read-through I think I've ever been to, if I'm honest, over the last decade. Without, I've been to you know dozens of these. Um, and uh, I want to get Russell T. Davis and three, well, two of the stars of that drama on for a podcast. Well, I've got so, honestly, so much. There's just incredible value for anyone who's getting involved with this community. I've just got so many, you know, podcasts coming up. But if you guys, you know, are like, I would love to, if you got that casting director on or you see someone who you want me to get on, um, please just let me know. If you're, if you're a premium member, let me know. Log into the members area, go into the premium community and leave it on the message board there. Just let me know who you would like me to get on and I will do my absolute best. Sharon says, loves Chris Eccleston. He was so good. He did a bit of a Q&A with Peter at that event. Um, really funny, um, particularly after a few glasses of wine. <laughs> they were all having wine, just sat on the stage. And uh, he was like a double act. Him and Peter were so funny. Um, so I'd love to get them on to, uh, together for a podcast. Julie, good evening. Um, Leroy, how are you doing, mate? Hope you are good. Chris Eccleston's book is great, albeit heartbreaking. Yeah, I read a... Um, a newspaper article actually from Chris all about you know struggles with mental health and stuff that I never knew anything about so I don't know if he'd uh, I'm sure I don't know if he'd open up about it on a podcast most people are happy to though but it'd be great to just I just love honesty in podcasts and we're all human man um, I was saying this to someone else the other day who was struggling like really struggling um, and I was saying like you know there's not a human being on the planet who at some point including myself at some point in their life has not needed help coping. Like, you should never be ashamed to think, like, you know, oh, God, you know, I'm struggling right now. I can't ask for help from anybody. Um, so, yeah, you know, if you're in that place right now, don't worry about it. Like, ask, well, you know, you're probably going to be worried about it, but, like, <laughs> ask for help to, uh, you know, to push through that worry. Just want to say, sorry, I missed the meetup, got caught out with work, said Dougal, I need to come see you, lovely people. For those who don't know what he's talking about, once a month on the first Saturday of every month, we do a act, an act on this meetup. It's not just for members either. If you're not a member of the website, doesn't matter. Come down. We just want to help you. Um, I hold I hold one at the Home Theatre in Manchester, um, just near Deansgate train station from 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. Um, sometimes they go on a bit after that. Coffee, cake, acting chat. We all help each other in our careers. 
set goals, share email addresses of casting directors and agents and this sort of stuff. Everyone gets advice from each other, basically. And Mel and Wendy host the one down in London at BFI, uh, British Film Institute, South Bank. There's a little bar inside there called Benugo Bar. And they hold this, the equivalent down there, 11 a.m. till 2, first Saturday of every month. Do come down if you've not been to one. Um, even Brendan. Brendan flew up twice <laughs> um, to, uh, to come to a meeting. He loved it so much he uh, came twice because I forgot to tell him the first time in time that it had been postponed till the week after. So he'd already booked his flight, bless him, came up, had to do a recce, and then flew up the week after for the real thing. So, uh, you know, so good. You know, people come twice. So, uh, yeah, do get yourself to a meet-up if you can. Um, let's have a look uh, what else is going on do you think you'd be able to get Nina Gold on right uh, Alex it's been it's been on my to-do list for five years mate I have tried <laughs> uh, I really have tried um, Nina and Robert I used to know a cast director who ended up working for Kate Roger James who had previously worked with Robert Stern let's try to get them to get me an in um, I know it or in my heart I know it will happen at some point, mate, I can't tell you when. Nina tends to do press very rarely. Um, she will do, like, you know, a really big double-page spread in the Times or something or the Guardian, like, once every two years, generally talking about a massive show. So I think the last time she did that was for Game of Thrones. Um, I don't know if... I mean, if I can grow this community big enough and we can generate enough revenue from subscriptions, I can offer to pay a massive fee to charity on her behalf that might make her go okay that's kind of worth it then because you're going to give you know a couple of grand to charity so spread the word get everyone signed up we'll we'll clump all the money together and we'll try and make it happen because um, it would be phenomenal i would love to know the inner workings of the office because the kudos of, when you see nina's name on something like you know it's it's she's it's, it's, it's probably i don't know like globally it's got to be in the top five you know casting directors probably on the planet nina and robert so i would love to alex we will try and make it happen mate and if anybody's got an in um and can make a little push for me then you know i need as much help as everyone else as well you know so th this is not just like a community like this is our community it's not just me so uh, you know if people think they can they can do anything to help us get guests on please let us uh you know let us know that would be amazing um brendan's saying i'm so happy my yes yeah, so brendan set up a, a little uh page about his sort of day job whilst he's been an actor he's a nurse as well um and he's uh decided he's going to do a little bit of vlogging behind the scenes of what it's like to be a nurse which i imagine at the moment brendan bloody hell mate with coronavirus you know i imagine like the whole medical industry has had a bit of a a bit of a shake up hasn't it over the last few days um this is what's good about running a website that's online as well um if you can't get to casting workshops and you're not going to those ones that are 100 quid for nine minutes uh, if you can't go to valuable casting workshops then you don't need to with that's on this.tv self-isolate and just listen to podcasts you know then send your emails out to casting directors who are probably self-isolating and together we can all self-isolate but move forward in our acting careers for when the coronavirus is gone and we can actually step outside so, uh, so that's a bonus of being a part of the community. Archie, how you doing, mate? Archie Purnell in the house, setting up his own agency. Can I talk about it, Archie? What? Do you need any more? Uh, are you looking for any more actors on your books? Archie was a great agent at a couple of um, agencies in Manchester. Stepped away from those those agencies, setting his own his own agency up. Um, let me know if you want me to tell anyone about it and uh, if you need anybody to put themselves forward to consider, you know, for representation. Um, but good to see you, dude. Hope all is good with that. I'm excited to see what you do with that. Um, everyone's saying congratulations to Brendan for his page. Mikey Warren, I don't know if you're still here, mate, but great to see you. If you are, buddy, hope you are good. Sophia, how are you doing? Um, currently watching on the treadmill, says Archie. Nice one, man. Well, you probably can't type to answer any uh, any questions whilst you're running. Um, but like I say, hope the agency's going well. Go try to get to the London meetup, says Nick. Do it, Nick. Honestly, mate, they have a really good time. Um, and if you're in Manchester anytime, you know, and it falls on one of those first Saturdays of the month, come and see me. I'd love to uh, meet you in person. Um, Leroy, how we doing? Just another 43 comments come through. Um, I'm going to have to just miss a few, unfortunately, guys. Really sorry if I'm not reading your comment. I will go back through and try and get to all of these, but they happen so fast. Toilet paper bribe for Nina Gold. <laughs> have you seen how ridiculous it is? I mean, I'm, I'm actually quite happy and proud of my local area where I live in Urmston in Manchester because I went to Sainsbury's yesterday for my Sunday big shop um, and I, I thought I'm going to go and see if I'm living amongst morons and I walked down the toilet roll aisle there was plenty. Not no shelves were empty. Same with kitchen roll. I thought, oh, 
few, you know, at least I'm in an area of the world where people aren't going to punch each other in the face um, for toilet roll. I don't know what people think it is. If you get coronavirus, it's a respiratory disease. It's not going to make your backside fall out. Um, it's ridiculous. Duncan says, met Nina at a party through a mutual friend. She's lovely. I always felt I made a tit of myself, but I've been in to see her a couple of times over the years. Well, Duncan, my man, <laughs> next time you see her at a party, just say, listen, I've been watching watching these broadcasts on a Monday night. Nina, you should definitely go and go and get involved with that's on this .tv. Um, if you can make that happen, uh, whoever can get me Nina Gold gets free membership for life. Shit, I put that on record now. But yeah, if you can make me an intro and uh, but I mean you've got to know her. Don't just go and now pester her and just ruin it. Don't don't everyone just hammer her with messages because then you'll just ruin the reputation forever. If you know her, um, then then put a little in for me and then let me know and uh, I'll sort you out. Um, Gary's got a film course coming up. I'm going to send a link out soon. Gary's like the man when it comes to getting funding. So Gary Thomas here in the comments. Um, if you if you're looking to create your own short films, all that sort of stuff, or plays, and you need money, right? Don't ask me because I ain't got any. But Gary Thomas um, is constantly on funding applications and getting cash. So he's put a little course together about creating a short film and like parts of it, all the all the kind of things you would have to go through in order to basically do that. Because Gary's created his own films now, um, so it's good that you put a course together, Gary. I think that's a great idea, mate. Um, definitely. So, um, yeah, good luck with that. Let us, uh, let us know. Um, oh, Andrea. Yeah. Agents meetings. Okay. Let's finish up on this and Archie's here so he can verify this. So, so Archie, you can tell me whether I'm talking bullshit because you are an agent or not. Um, hopefully together we can give out some decent answers now. So for those who are going to meet agents, <laughs> um, so people are sometimes intimidated by this, right? And they go in and they get the balance wrong, right? They either sit there very timidly and they just don't ask anything and they're afraid to sort of, you know, pr it's not prying, is it? But, you know, kind of delve a bit deeper into that agent's relationships in the industry and what their clients are working on, etc. So they leave with loads of questions not being answered. Um, and then they, you know, even if they get offered representation, they're like, oh God, I don't know if they're right because I left with all these questions. Um, on the other hand, other people go in, do you know what? I think I might have done this over the years as well. I think sometimes I've, you know, in my over the last 20 years, sometimes when I've been for meetings with agents, I think sometimes I've been a little bit overbearing. So I think sometimes I've probably asked a bit much because I can talk a lot. And particularly when I kind of like feel a bit nervous, <laughs> I think I just talk myself out of a job sometimes. Um, so you've got to get the balance right of kind of not looking like you're interrogating this person, but I think leading with curiosity so it looks like you're invested in, you know, a partnership with this agent. So for me, the questions that I always ask when I meet agents and that have worked for me where I've been offered representation are things like, you know, I mean, obviously, what are what areas do you think you are strongest in in terms of where do you have the best connections and what are your clients currently working in? Because if you want to work in TV, but this agent there's nothing wrong with it. Obviously, agents specialize in different areas and they will probably fall heavier into one category than the other. They might be really, really well connected on theater or musical theater, the West End, you know, London, I don't know, Northern Theater, whatever. Um, but then their connections with, you know, London-based high-profile TV cast directors are not as strong. You know, and I get that if they're based in the North, that's just the way that it's going to be because of proximity. So you want to know and be clear with them what you want to work in and, you know, ultimately, you know, how many of their current clients are working in the area you want to work in? Because that's a great barometer to suggest that, oh, okay, well, you know, if they've got 10 clients all working in, you know, this area and I want to work in that area, thus, you know, there's a high likelihood I'm going to be able to, you know, get opportunities there. So I always ask that. Um I like to, uh, I don't know, sometimes we talk about, you know, sort of get just getting a read on, you know, seeing if they agree with me in terms of what I am in terms of my casting type. So I go, right, I see myself playing, you know, authority figure roles. You know, I get cast a lot as doctors, you know, policemen, lawyers, estate agents, those kind of roles, office workers, etc. cetera. Um, you know, after this 30 minute conversation with me, you know, and based on my headshot and what you've seen on my showreel, what would you push me for? What area do you think I fall into? Uh, can you see something that I'm not seeing? Because maybe, you know, I'm misreading myself or my casting type. Um, are there things that you think, you know, that you're excited about pushing me for? Because they've got to want to get you jobs. Archie, right? 
you're on here as an agent, you know, I guess when you're meeting potential clients, you've got to get excited about going, you know what, I could work with this person. I can see you in this. I can see you in that. I would be pushing you forward right now for this. So it's really interesting to get, you know, someone else's opinion because maybe the agent you're with or even in your head, you're limiting yourself for what you think you can, you know, you can go for. So that's always uh, always useful to ask. Um, other questions are just general stuff, to be honest, Andrew, in, ter- in terms of, you know, uh, who they have the best relationships with, you know, really, in terms of, you know, you're not, I say, interrogating them. But if you go along and you say, listen, with my last agent, the, I couldn't get seen by Kate Rose James or Kelly Valentine Henry or Victor Jenkins or Andy Pryor, you know, the the, the big hitters in, uh, in London, Daniel Edwards, uh, people like that. And these are the people I really want to see. And there's nothing wrong with asking them what their relationships are like with those people. Because if they say, you know, I'm not on their list and I haven't ever had any of my clients seeing them, then there's not a lot of point in jumping shit from where you're at. You know, you might as well try and find somebody who has, uh, you know, who has got those connections. And it's just business. People shouldn't be taking any of this personally. This is just the equivalent of going as a plumber going to a supplier and saying, hi, I specialize in bathrooms. Do you sell bathroom supplies? And they go, actually, you know what? No, we don't. We specialize in kitchens. You go, oh, all right. No problem. Thanks. Thanks. I'll, I'll go and ask somewhere else. You know, you need to be kind of like slightly objective sometimes. Otherwise, you end up like signing and thinking, oh, shit, what have I done? You know, now I'm going to have to stay here for six months or, you know, you've got to be sure. You've got to feel excited and they've got to feel excited about signing you ultimately. Um, So, yeah, and apart from that, just go and have a lovely time. You know, they're not going to ask you to do a song and a dance. If they do, just walk out. Anyone who goes, right. I would like to see you uh, perform a contemporary dance and do me a monologue now. I'll be like, nah, you've seen my show reel. What, what, you, what am I doing here? Um, so yeah, definitely uh, ask questions. There are no stupid questions, I don't think, Andrea, bar the ones that you uh, you don't ask. So just um, you know, just don't don't leave. I hate leaving a room um, when. Uh, you know, when I've got questions, just, you know, just don't, don't leave without being completely clear. And if you need to write stuff down on a pad uh, and some paper, then do that, you know, so you can go, look, I'm, I'm sorry, right, but I just don't, you know, I might be a bit nervous and I don't want to forget some of these questions. These are really important things I'd like to ask you. Um, ask. So, um, so yeah, so do that. Good luck and do let us all, uh, do let us all know. Another 95 comments have just come through, guys. I'm so sorry I can't keep up with them as quick. Drew Jones in the house. Lee Petcher, how you doing, mate? Uh, I'm surprised. Lee's just been working around here all day. I'm surprised he's tuning in tonight and he can be bothered. Um, but yeah, anyone with agent uh, questions as well, if you are a premium member of Acts on This TV, there are some fantastic, let me just show you quickly because then I will go. It's just gone 10 o'clock. Um, but in the members area, there's an entire section. I'm going to reload this page because I don't think some of the pictures loaded before. I've got slow internet connection, but on this page inside your premium membership, like I say, the best value for your acting career in the land, £4.25 a week gets you access to the biggest um, people in the industry. Without a doubt, these guys run the industry. You know, as Andy Pryor, one of the biggest casting directors like, on the planet, Victor Jenkins, same in there, Louis Arnold, Jill Halfpenny. Incredible people. Um, there's, there's, it's all broken out in sections. So we've got features with actors, features with agents. Check this section out. So there's some great... Uh, there's Archie. There's, uh, we're talking about him and there he is. That's when he used to work at Icon. Archie, we'll get you back on for a podcast, mate. Now you've set your own agency up and we can talk about that. Um, but we've got, yeah, Regan, Manchester. There's Brian and Nicola. They're absolutely awesome. Natalie Payne's a fantastic agent. Archie's a great agent. Alex Priestley. Guy at WGM Atlantic. My agent, Jane. Got voiceover agents on there as well. Um you know they, these are in-depth podcasts that are two and a half three hours long where we go through the entire process of what each agent wants from you what they want you to do to you know ultimately you know get in the room with them what you would have to do to pique their interest what they want in your show reel what they want in cover letters what to ask when you meet them the things you should be asking um you know all kinds of stuff about the industry um that you're hearing from the horse's mouth so you don't have to guess what agents want just sit down or while you're on the treadmill like Archie is now, pop in a pair of headphones, listen to this stuff. There's probably, what's that, probably two and a half, five, ten, nearly 20 hours worth of in-depth conversation with some great agents there that will give you the more of a, you'll get more of an education from listening to that than you would do, than go into, I don't know, 10 of these bullshit workshops that are 100 quid each. 
You know, it's nonsense. You get a thousand pounds worth of value out of, you know, just join for a month. It's 17 quid and cancel. I mean, I don't want you to cancel. Obviously, I want you to support the community. But if you just want to try it for a month, listen to all this stuff. Um, some of the biggest actors in the industry, some of the biggest agents, some of the biggest casting directors, exec producers, um, and you get discounts on stuff as well. For those who are in voiceover training, I'm not going to click into it because it'll give you the give you the discount code. But at the bottom there, Gravy for the Brain, you get 25% off voiceover training with Gravy for the Brain. Um, that in itself practically covers your monthly membership. So if you're currently a Gravy for the Brain member, get an act on this membership, get the discount code cancel your membership for Grave for the Brain and redo it with the 25% off. And you'll basically be paying practically nothing for your acts on this membership. Um, so there's loads of stuff there. But yeah, um, if you are looking for agent stuff, listen to those interviews. You will learn a bloody ton. And I've got more and more and more coming up. Um, so it's just gone 10 o'clock. I'm going to love you and leave you. Um, I says totally. I think each agent is different for me. I have to get on with them, and most of all, they need to match the relationships that I have. To be fair, I'm lucky. I've got uh, some good ones, so quite open in terms of type of actor. Um, so uh, yeah, keep a uh, keep an eye on Archie. So it's called Stella. Is it Talent Group, Archie? Is that what you're going under? STG Stella Talent Group. Um, check it out. Look at him on Facebook. I'm sure you've got a Facebook page. I'm sure you know he's social media savvy. He'll have Twitter and all that sort of stuff. But if you're currently unrepped and you think you're bloody talented, um, reach out to Archie, because um, I can vouch for him. He knows what he's doing. Um, Brendan, if I told her, if the, uh, I told her if the casting director was for a student film, I wouldn't do it. If it's for BBC, I'd get my shift covered. Oh, you're talking about getting time off work for auditions. Um, yeah, if you're getting a big audition, uh, Brendan, and everyone's got coronavirus, just run away from work, mate. Uh, would love to be with Natalie Payne, said Ollie. Natalie's great, you know. She keeps her client list so small. I know some great actors who have been to meet her, for potential rep and she's not quite been able to open her roster up to them and they're really really good so i guess it's just a matter of um patience ollie um but she's she yeah i respect natalie a lot like she's she's such a strong character in terms of like you would feel in safe hands like shit no one <laughs> no one is messing with me if natalie Payne is uh is my agent and she's just lovely when she did the podcast with us she was so open and honest and giving and uh, her book you should get a book anyone who's looking for more in-depth stuff about agents as well natalie's got a book called an agent's perspective it's dead cheap i think it's like five or six quid or something on amazon um self-published book about all the questions she's been asked over the years uh, whilst being an agent or things that she's just like look I'm, i wish actors would know this uh when they're applying for uh for representation so um so do check check that out i will go back through these uh these comments when i finish guys um to see if there was any uh, any stuff that's urgent and needs uh attention um Email me anytime you want. Uh, if you've got any other questions, I've not been able to answer them. I've missed your comments here. I'm massively sorry about that. Um, Ross at actonthis.tv. Um, do uh, do drop me an email. I will. It might take me a little bit to get back to you. Sometimes it takes a little while, uh, but I will definitely get back to you. And for all you premium members, again, in I'm sure you know about this, but if you click on community at the top once you're logged in, you'll go to the private this is a private community on the site it's not facebook yes we have a facebook group but sometimes people don't want to post their private stuff uh, on facebook this is like super private closed off to the public this is just for premium members um there's stuff that's coming on uh, the site in march 2020 for premium members uh, but it's a really buzzing lively forum uh, where people are asking questions and getting advice and everyone's just kind of chipping in with each other. So if you've got any questions that you want to ask that you're not happy about asking in public, and I totally get that because you're like, I might be wanting to change agents, but my agent might be in this in this Facebook group, etc. cetera. Um, click into the private community there um, and leave a message. And then anytime someone replies, you'll get an email saying you've had a reply to your question. Um, it's dead easy to keep, you know, keep a track of. And um, it's going to be getting better as well. I'm going to be launching like a version two of that um, later on this year, I'm going to be looking at ways to even do live video uh, within there as well so we can do some private sessions away from Facebook. I'll still always be doing this because I love giving value to people uh, on Facebook, but there might be some stuff that I will uh, you know, I will do just for uh, premium members as well. Uh, so I'm just going to get this lined up, ready to end tonight's broadcast. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Sorry about my rant at the beginning, but do do your, your due diligence on workshops. 100 quid for nine minutes. What a load of shit. Um, it's bollocks. A two hour warm up. Who needs to warm up for two hours? Can I charge you hundred quid for this for this workshop and two hours of it? <laughs> You're gonna be warming up. 
just a farce. It just really makes me laugh. I'm like, oh my God, honestly. I know some West End actors in like some of the biggest musicals. They don't warm up for two hours. Um, just a cash cow. Um, offer. Be better. Workshop owners, be better. Right? Freaking step up. And if you're not earning enough money out of doing the job that you're professing to do, if you're a casting director and you have to charge 100 quid for a workshop, that suggests to me you're not earning any money being a casting director. Thus, you're irrelevant. So go out and get a job. Start casting and earning enough money from that to do your workshops for a reasonable price. Peter Hunt and Daniel Edwards are going to do workshops with me for the acts on this community, and we're going to do them for charity. They're going to be a tenner, and we're going to give that money to Once Upon a Smile, a child's bereavement charity that I'm a patron of, um, because these guys are earning loads of money being casting directors, they don't need to subsidize their living because they're failing at the job. They are telling you that they are, that they, you know, they're, they're selling you because they're this thing that actually they're not earning any money from. Um, so yeah, step up, clean your acts up, people. Um, gonna love you and leave you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm never gonna work again in this town. The best casting directors and all the legitimate ones, you know, know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm sure they agree. And um, thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate you being here. I know you could be doing something else on a Monday night, or you could be watching Netflix and chilling or whatever. Um, so I appreciate every last one of you. Thank you if you are listening on the audio experience, if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, watching the replay on YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook or anything like that. Um, and like I say, I really mean it. If I can do anything for you, please do uh, do let me know. Um, so lots of love. Have an amazing week, and I will uh, I'll speak to you again soon. All right. Until next time, bye for now. 